the Lord Jesus has set in the church some people to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. These are valid ministries in the church today. There are men and women who function uh, and have been appointed by the Lord Jesus Christ in the church, in the, in the body of Christ, in, the, in, the, in these functions. But like we said last Sunday, the purpose of these ministries is to, number one, verse 12, it says, to equip the saints. It's to equip God's people. It's to bring in enabling and teaching and training and building up of God's people and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Sometimes, uh, you know, while we recognize the validity or the, the, uh, the, the importance of these ministries, sometimes, and perhaps it is cultural or for whatever reason, we elevate these people to such high levels. So it's like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the preacher. Uh, we elevate them to levels God never intended. Now, please understand, I'm not saying we shouldn't honor them. They are people of God. We honor them. We respect them. Uh, we give them the honor that's due. But they are not at the same level as God Almighty. The first thing we must understand concerning the anointing operating through a minister of God is that just because a person is called, anointed, and gifted, and manifest signs and wonders does not mean they are infallible and cannot be in error. One is when the anointing is moving through the person, wonderful things happen. But when the person is preaching or teaching, he could actually be preaching and teaching error. So the second thing I want to talk about in relation to this anointing is, be careful when ministers start merchandising the anointing. Just for your information, the Holy Spirit is not for sale. Third thing we want to say about in relation to the anointing is look for the fruit not just for the performance number four do not boast in men number five concerning the anointing who do you need in your life jesus or an anointed minister of god impartation is a true thing in scripture it means that the grace the gift and the anointing that a man of god or woman of god carries can be transferred to other people. It's a valid thing. Impartation is always aligned to God's call and assignment on your life. Doesn't matter how much I want to become a worship leader and doesn't matter whether I go to Australia, I go to Bethel or I go to Hillsong or wherever and get all those people lay hands on me, I will never become a worship leader unless God has called me to that. Impartation often takes place in a measure. That means a man of God can be anointed with different graces and gifts on his life. When he lays hands on you, it's not a full package transfer. A part, a portion of what he's carrying is what is coming into your life. Everything received through impartation has to be nurtured and developed. You can grow beyond what was imparted both in measure and realms. That means Somebody prays away, they impart to you. Of course, you can develop, but you can grow beyond it. That's not a ceiling. Number five, let me just go quickly. Uh, you can receive impartation from more than one minister of God. There's nothing wrong in having many different people pray for you to receive grace. Number six, two factors that determine what you receive through impartation. Your hunger and God's assignment. So you've got to be hungry in order to receive. Seven, impartation takes place through association and honor that means you need to connect uh, uh, when i say connect meaning you to receive from that person receive the teaching receive what god is re releasing through that person number eight impartation can take place remotely so you could be in one place you're following a ministry somewhere else and impartation is taking place because there is no distance in the realm of the spirit you can receive number nine impartation cannot be purchased with money you can't buy the gift of god with money number 10 a double portion can only be received from god last point impartation can take place across generations so we see the example of the spirit of and power of elijah coming on john the baptist thousands of years apart but yet there was a transfer of that grace and anointing. Ephesians 4, 14, 15, Paul says, We no longer want you to be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. We don't want you to be like that, you know, just tossed to and fro. Somebody says something new, you get carried away by that. Somebody says something new, you get carried away by that. No, focus on Jesus. Verse 15, he says, We must grow up in all things to be like that's the focus. Lord, I want to grow up to be like you.